recording to the cloud. Recording to the cloud. Okay. Good morning. No, it's definitely afternoon. The sun's at three o'clock here. <laughs> She's lying. <laughs> Somebody's in the morning hours. It's my morning. It's five o'clock somewhere. Okay. Okay, so welcome. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> ah, you must think we're absolutely crazy. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You're right. <laughs> My insane, my insane thoughts are showing me a meaningless world. Okay. So we are on lesson 54. Mm. I wonder what we're going to learn today. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. These are the review ideas for today. Number one, I have no neutral thoughts. Hmm. Neutral thoughts are impossible because all thoughts have power. They will either make a false world or lead me to the real one. But thoughts cannot be without effects. Mm. Yeah. As the world I see arises from my thinking errors, so will a real world rise before my eyes as I let my errors be corrected. I just want to stop here for a second because in the last lesson, 53, review lesson, I think it was, we um, talked about through the ego filter how uh, our beliefs are investments, they're values that we have. So if we're fearful of something, mm -hmm. uh, then we're going to make that real. Yeah. Yes. Um, and that's how we make a false world. That is so, it's why, why it's crucial that we do the lessons in the course so we can undo um, our addiction. Mm -hmm. Addiction, I was going to say that. Mm. No, okay, yeah. <laughs> right. Our addiction to uh, the ego's beliefs mm -hmm. it, in, you know, sin, guilt, and fear. Right. So, yeah, I just want to say that. So here we are still in lesson number one here. I have no neutral thoughts. So my thoughts cannot be neither true nor false. This is interesting and important. They must be one or the other. They must be either true, my thoughts, or they're wholly false. What I see, you know, shows me which they are so what i see or in other words what i what i see shows me what i believe mm -hmm. false or true you know are we seeing through the ego filter or are we seeing with holy spirit mm -hmm. did you want to add something to that sis well i think he's linking up the nexus between the thoughts that we think and the power because of that there's never any idle neutral or gray area thoughts you're either accepting the ego's suggestions as your thoughts or you are allowing god's thoughts to be yours so one is wholly true or wholly false and the response that you have to what you're experiencing are you in contraction are you triggered or in fear well you know you're looking upon what's not really there and that's the ego um so there's never a time where there's not anything it's good to know that our thoughts and what we're experiencing really are one and the same you know this is the outward picturing of an inward condition so to just watch that connection and and that'll help us with the incentive to really stay vigilant with what we're thinking with what mind only one mind, but right, the ego, or checking with Holy Spirit. So as soon as we have a fear thought, mm -hmm. we trigger it, or, a, you know, scarcity thought, or whatever, pain, thought of pain, mm -hmm. we're in the wrong mind, we're in, aren't we? Okay. Yeah. So at that point, we become lucid. And we go, okay, I am seeing what is not there. Right 
feeling what is not there. And that's when we ask Holy Spirit, um, or that's when we choose again, we ask Holy Spirit to come in and right. to re divinely reinterpret mm -hmm. what it is that we mistakenly fell for through the wrong mind, the ego mind, right? I choose to allow him, I'm replacing, surrendering what I thought and allowing my real thoughts to be revealed to me with the Holy Spirit. But that thoughts cannot be without effects. That's the biggie, I think, on this one. It's just, we're always, we're always making or creating depending on what mind we're with, but there will be results as the, as a effect of the mind that we are using. Mm. Mm. It's a big one, isn't it? It is. But no responsibility nothing, in there. <laughs> but nothing at all happens to us without our consent. Good point. We're never victims of the world that we see. It's always the contents of our thoughts. And that was a choice we made based on what we value. Right. But we're not to feel guilty about that, right? No, because what we think we've done has never actually occurred. So really, it's just a matter of, are you living or are you not? Is this something real going on or not? Not good or bad. Think of it in terms of actually occurring reality or unreality. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Still on lesson 54, number two, I see no neutral things. What I see witnesses to what I think. Mm -hmm. And oh, sorry, if I did not think, well, if I did not think, I would not exist because life is thought. Did you not have a second sentence on that one? No, where's your second sentence? Read it, please. What I see witnesses to what I think. It is impossible to see nothing because it is impossible not to think. Oh, I wish they'd kept that in the FIP version. Well, COA did. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, winning. Okay. okay. Right. Get five points up on me. <laughs> <laughs> you got to laugh, right? <laughs> oh, there you go, man. Right. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Thank okay. you for the laugh. That was great. Yeah. Okay. So um, I like your version. Me too. Which, this time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So if I did not think, I would not exist because life is thought. Whoa. Right. <laughs> Let me look on the world I see as the representation of my own state of mind. I know that my state of mind can change. And so I also know the world I see can change as well. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. So good. So that's why it's just one, you know, it's one. And so if it's all one, you can make a correction at the level of mind, your thought and what you're experiencing has to change. So what does that have to do with healing? <laughs> all, all imperfection, all body complaints, everything, all our problems, right? If, you're, if we're talking about health issues or body issues, the cause is in the mind and uh, the body is simply um, manifesting the contents of our thoughts. So wouldn't it also follow that when we heal the mind, change our thoughts to the thoughts of God, what would happen to the effects of those thoughts has to has to change. Just planting seeds early. <laughs> yeah. So I, something's coming in. So I, I'm just, not honest with you. So just bear with me for a few seconds while I entertain right. Karine. Let me think of I think of a joke here. <laughs> oh, Hang on a minute. Um, so I okay. That, that little um, revision lesson is I see no neutral things, right? Right. Okay. So if I see no neutral things 
And yet, the body, you know, is neutral. But not the way, depending on how we're Talk doing it. Because that, that might, you know, elsewhere in the course, uh, Jesus explains that basically everything we think we see in the dream is neutral. Yes. It has no meaning apart from the meaning we assign to it, right? Yes. Okay, so the body mm -hmm. is completely neutral. Mm -hmm. It's a made-up thought in the mind, and now the question becomes, what are you using it for? You wanted it, but what's the purpose to which you, have you placed it under the ego thought system as a weapon, or yes. are you placing it under the divine mind as a communication device? But anyway, okay. yes, we've assigned value to it based on what we want to use it for. Okay, so let's use um, a significant relationship, okay. a significant other, mm -hmm. whoever that might be. It might be our partner, it might be our child, parent, whatever. So this would apply the same, yes? Yes. What am I using it for? What's the purpose that I'm assigning to this relationship? Yes. Yes? Yes. Okay, so when I look at this relationship or when I look at my significant other, um, I am giving him or her all the meaning he or she has for me, depending upon which part of my mind I'm looking at her or him. Right. Yes. So if I'm using somebody for with uh, to heal my mind, the opposite of the separation is union. So if I'm using the relationship for the purpose of union, sameness, oneness, no private interests, uh, seeing their innocence and therefore my own, meaning I don't have this going on, right? Or I want to use that relationship to prove that I am Corrine. So use, you know, you're my mom, you're my dad, you're my daughter, you're my significant other, whatever, right? The special roles, and the scripts that we have them read, you need to objectify me as Corrine and uphold this lie about myself, relate to me as Corrine, expect me to be a Corrine. Um, and I, you know, uh, likewise will hold you as your body and your story. And that's to use the body lovelessly and for separation and to keep us body bound. Mm. Attack. Attack. Which leads to? Death. <laughs> you gotta laugh. The ego, really. <laughs> right? Yeah. Hey, you know, this doesn't lie. This 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 diagram does not lie. So anybody that wants to really look at it, every special relationship leads to death. Sorry. What does it say death? Huh? I've never seen that before. Just kidding. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, let's, oh, you guys, it's good, but that's the truth. Every every special relationship, the goal is to make bodies real. And hey, we all know that in the dream, the natural and inevitable result of every body is the casket, right? Ah, so good. But there's a way out. Okay. Thank God. Thank Jesus. Yeah. Thank okay. So. <clears throat> We're still on lesson 54 and we're <laughs> up to number three. Which yeah. is, sorry? Yes. I am not alone in experiencing the effects of my seeing. Ooh. How's that possible? Oh, I am not alone in experiencing the effects of my seeing. Oh, boy. Does that mean we're accountable? <laughs> Even more so? Mm. Okay, so if I have no private thoughts, I cannot see a private world. Mm. Even the mad idea of separation had to be shared before it could form the basis of the world I see. Two or more minds. Can you show us the diagram again, just in case we missed it the last hundred times? <laughs> I was laughing because I was just thinking somebody out there is going to have a bow and arrow. And next time I do this, they're going to go. 
<laughs> if you show us that diagram one more time, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, here we go. Um, Had to be shared. Just saying. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Yet that sharing was a sharing of nothing <laughs> in the gap diagram. Okay. As we know. <laughs> Which we won't show. In case you missed it. I, I can also call upon my real thoughts which share everything with everyone. Mm -hmm. Private thoughts. Mm -hmm. As my thoughts of separation call to the separation thoughts of others, so my real thoughts awaken the real thoughts in them. Mm -hmm. And the world my real thoughts show me, the real world, will dawn on their sight as well as mine. How could that happen? Mm -hmm. Because we love the mind of God of which we are all part is continuous mm -hmm. so that means that it is uninterrupted there are no breaks in communication and so it's we're we're communicating in God all the time there's no moment where we're not mm -hmm. but when we choose a split mind, the ego mind, we switch off our awareness of what's going on all the time. To have private so thoughts. Pull the plug on the awareness of it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so, yeah. And the next one is 54 and it is number four. I am not alone in experiencing the effects of my thoughts. So he's saying here, um, I'm not, al sorry, I am alone in nothing. Everything I think or say or do, whew, that's big, teaches all the universe. Everything I think, I say or do. Teaches all the universe. Does yours say teaches or touches? Oh, teaches. Really? Yes. What have you got? Touches. Mm. Okay. So let me just. Um, I'd say both were true, but anyway. Both. Yes, because because uh, let's just stop here. Sure. Uh, teaches is applicable mm -hmm. because uh you know we teach through demonstration we're always teaching what we always. want what we believe yeah yeah but touches as well so they're both true what a shame they didn't put touches and teaches <laughs> tickles <laughs> <laughs> okay um a son of god cannot think or speak or act in vain. Hmm. He cannot be alone in anything. It is therefore in my power to change every mind along with mine, for mine is the power of God. Ooh. Is that what it says in yours? Yes. Yes. Because all minds are joined as one. Almost like the, the the pebble in the pond and the rings that go out and the ripple effect, or you know, if a web, you know, you hit one of it, the whole thing is affected. Um, but every time, you know, we will with God, we heal our thoughts. That has a beneficent, <laughs> a holy effect on the entire sonship. Isn't that gorgeous? It is, and it's it's a little visual that I often mm -hmm. recall. Is is the darkness, you know, when when there's all these billions of seemingly split minds that are immersed in a dream of separation, when one of us comes in and remembers the light, it definitely uh, that light goes right through all of that darkness to some extent. But when, when two of us show up, as with the gap diagram, when two of us show up. Don't make and, me show it. 
uh -huh. join in the same perfect goal of that union again, mm -hmm. uh, healing the split mind, well, then that light travels right throughout the sonship, the mind. Yeah. And that is the importance of the holy relationship, you know, two sharing the same goal. They don't want this anymore. Two or more it were required to bring this into seeming being. It never occurred, but because we're all walking around talking like it did, you know, we've all given it our belief. And so it seems to have occurred. When two or more have this as their singular desire, remember that what's inside the circle, this unified mind is the exact same as what's outside of it. And that circle falls away. So all that there is two or more who have, who join in the perfect undivided will of God to join in no oneness or creation, um, that, that is the presence of God. That is the will of God here in the dream. That is the home of the Holy Spirit. And he uses that relationship to perform miracles and it's gonna have its own divine function. It's amazing. But this is miraculous. And what, uh, when, when two share the same goal, just as, as devastating as that was, you know, imagine the power when two agree, no, come back to the mind of God. And that's the goal of our relationship, that right there. Beautiful. Thanks for bringing that in. Yeah. That's important to bring in because yeah. we're one sixth the way through here. I think. Anyway, um, uh, I, but when you did that, um, something came to mind. And um, uh, just very quickly, mm -hmm. talk about the means of the holy relationship. When you close that diagram yeah. and all separation disappeared, the means is forgiveness. So this is a relationship or relationships, two or more, um, that are devoted to forgiving each other. Yes. Can you imagine being in a relationship with somebody who consistently forgives you? It's the best feeling. And it doesn't make any demands on you. No. Can you imagine? Because love makes no demands. So that, that is where the miracles come pouring in and through and are extended out to the sonship as well. And you can feel the world as we all know it, this, the world of separation. Everybody's got their deep-seated unworthiness and hidden secrets inside. And in the world, let's face it, should you actually have the guts to bring it up and confess it to somebody, 99.9% um, .9 of the time, that person makes a mental note, takes that information, files it away, and then uses it to, you know, knife you in a moment of vulnerability when it suits them. So this is why we don't show our cards. And so I just want you to breathe in and feel into what it would be like to have a full-time relationship, doesn't have to be man and woman, friend, whatever, any two that decide that this is what I want and only this, I want to heal my mind, to have somebody that has is committed to that whatever you have to bring to the light, to the relationship, whatever darkness, unworthiness, thoughts of past abuse, victimization, or being a victimizer, whatever we just are terrified to look at or even admit to, to bring it to the table and feel into the, the truth that that holy relationship partner their vow to you is to forgive that and know that it's no part of you, to recognize, to make the positive separation in their mind on your behalf when you still seem to be somehow emotionally charged to that story. It's like they're right there to, to hold and know that isn't you. That's never been you. That's happening in an ego thought system and you know, you're not that. And I'm here to remind you of what you are when you forget. And you're here to remind me of what I am when I forget. Um, and the trust that builds. And then, of course, the overflowing gratitude and the love that develops uh, because that's your um, commitment to one another. It's not of this world. And that's a celestial speed up. <laughs> perfect love in the world. A perfect love experience right here in a dream of fear. It's possible. 
Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sis. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Daniel, if you're watching yes. TTC family. <laughs> watching. Um, okay, so we're still on lesson 54. <laughs> An hour later. <laughs> That's right. Forgive us, please. And we're on number five. I am determined to see, you know, and we can only see in light. That's right. Okay. Recognizing the shared nature of my thoughts, I am determined to see. I would look upon the witnesses that show me the thinking of the world has been changed, shifted from fear and conflict to love and union. I would behold the proof that what has been done through me has enabled love to replace fear, laughter to replace tears, and abundance to replace loss. Oh, yeah. I would look upon the real world and let it teach me that my will and the will of God are one. So instead of forcing our definitions on the world that we see, we stop, withdraw our, our thoughts, and allow what is there to communicate what it is to us, which is that impartation, that first question out of the gate. You know, how do we know God's thoughts? It's when we get out of the way and let God's God and God's creation reveal, inform us of what is there. And, and that can't happen until we have removed you know our arrogant um insistence that we know what anything is for or what it is yeah our judgment thank you for that and that concludes our lesson 54 and thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you tomorrow for lesson 55 55 yeah. comes after 54 yes, yes it does. usually <laughs> yes. Okay, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.